Welcome back to Development Dynamics. Uh, this time around, maybe not Didi with Maxi, just Development Dynamics. Which camera am I looking at? This one. Oh, perfect. Yes. Um, a, a different set, a different time. This is uh, today's July, when July 25th. And um, we want to use this opportunity to provide uh, some reflections on, um, on a conference that we attended recently actually just last week and that's why i'm saying this is very different usually we are documenting stories of movement builders stories of leaders and practitioners in the development field you know telling their journey from birth to date but this time around we are telling our own journey um, and our participation at the women deliver conference from around the 15th 16th to um, this past weekend. The theme for this conference was Spaces, Solidarity, and Solutions. And as Development Dynamics, uh, three of us got an opportunity to attend both virtually and in person. And you're going to really just have a conversation. I'm delighted today as Maxi um, to, to have two of my colleagues, two young brilliant minds that we work together to uh, reframe, reimagine, and resolve solutions in the development space and in broader social impact. And I'll, in, I'll ask them to introduce themselves to our audience at DD, and then we can take on the conversation from there. So why don't I start with the gentleman far on my left? Yeah, um, uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Rashid David Mutaha. Uh, when he says the three of us got to attend Women Deliver, I think it should be two and a half people got to attend <laughs> Women Deliver <laughs> as I was joining in virtually. So yeah. just making that clarification. But yes, Rashid David Mutaha um, work with Development Dynamics as a design and campaign strategist and also just the goofball who put some life to the party absolutely and we we love you for that and then yeah. um sandwiched in between us is <laughs> not entirely pause <laughs> <laughs> not entirely but yes uh moses why but um you can call me rafiki and what i do for development dynamics is uh pretty much research project management and analysis and um yeah, that's my contribution to the team and to the work that we do in support of our clients and in collaboration with partners. This is interesting because even as we sort of try to begin this conference, this is um, three men, at least three male-identifying species <laughs> <laughs> who are reflected about a women's deliver conference. And yeah, I get that yeah. by itself is a conundrum. I don't know what your uh, reflection is on that. Well, yeah, we definitely... Yet, our team, just right. to clarify, our team, including someone who is not on this part of the of the room, is, I think we are 70% female. So, uh, just putting it out there, we're like 11 of us and only four dudes, seven girls, or thereabout, I don't know. So, uh, it is a different context, but what's your reflection on men I Identif no men trying to reflect around a, a women's Women conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you wanna yeah, you can go okay. first. Cool. Well, I mean, yeah. Um, but I don't know if that really is the case because okay, so it's male presence at women deliver, which sounds like it's it's off. But ideally, <coughs> women deliver was also about gender equality. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily that you feel out of place. It's only that it was very prevalent the presence of women in so many of the spaces that we had the opportunity to sort of be inside of. Yeah. And there's also a lot of women in the discussions that were held, yeah. in my opinion, at least yeah. in my observation. Absolutely. And yeah. I remember, I, I think there's a session that we attended where we were like, all right, these are all women funders yep. who are funding women-led solutions. And I guess other than the two of us, there was probably only one or two other gentlemen in a room that was absolutely like full 50. But we've also found ourselves previously, even with our clients and with the communities that we serve, <laughs> as the as the um, as the only male identifying species, especially mm. in the development mm. space, Rashid, you you've been around this game for for, for, for a quite while. Quite a while now, yeah. Um, what's what's your inclination? Well, 
<laughs> need to give context. <laughs> no, we are trying to be serious. You're trying to record a serious podcast. Yeah, um but you know just uh picking up from what Rafiki is saying. Uh for me the idea of uh you know identifying as a man and as of the male species and being a part of such a conference is really to also ensure that as we continue you know we have this conversation where we're always saying we want to empower the boy child or empower the girl child but if we don't empower the boy child then we are still leaving them in a predicament where if you look at like uh rural settings power still belongs to people who identify as male to the man mm-hmm. and so if we don't empower the man if we don't bring men into this conversation then we're really just taking one step forward and then two steps backwards so i believe it's always important to you know invite ourselves into these spaces so that we can be able to see what's the other um context uh that exists within how main uh, our men and male species are engaged you know you've made us just say start saying male species <laughs> but how men are engaged within this whole um you know reproductive health space mm. and how is it that we can continue bringing in more innovative solutions that allow even you know when we say we want to empower the wanjiko but why are we not empowering the kamao and the otieno mm in the rural area completely to also you know identify and also um respect the bodily autonomy of women within those spaces so it's always important to just keep on coming into these places and spaces so that we see how do we bring this back and truncate it down yeah. um to the village level but again at the end of the day it's usually just um I remember once we were going for the commission for the status of women uh, mm-hmm. which happens in the states mm. and the question when <laughs> going to get the visa was so why is a man attending a women's conference Absolutely but mm. it's really because of that yeah. it's just to see how do we continue to challenge this um you know predicaments or ideas that exist where men are not supposed to you know be involved in conversations for reproductive health a clear theme that was coming out at, with this conference is just the role of power structures mm. power shifting but also from just a patriarchal um especially i mean if i put it this way a patriarchal african society where uh, the man is the be it and it you know key decision maker um when you're talking about power shifting power uh transfer and now not even looking at it from a feed level but looking at it from a very basic uh, family and society level um based on what was being discussed but also based on your own, uh, you know your own reflections how do we achieve proper power structures that are a, a little bit more enabling and inclusive in the kind of world uh, in the kind of gender um diverse gender powered world that we are hoping we can be a contributor to how do we how do we add value to enable um n- less negative power structures to be in place especially at the domestic level and also at the society level right um yeah actually p- picking up on where he left off because mm-hmm. there is this assumption why is a man attending a women's conference mm-hmm. and so i guess if that's a question that somebody would ask then that means it was never really answered from when they were even growing up in mm-hmm. the first place mm-hmm. which is which takes me to identity mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the man needs to recognize his identity but also in the perspective of the woman mm-hmm. right and so when they also recognize the identity of a woman it makes more sense to them mm-hmm. why exactly like a feminist cause makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. because it is about this identity and this value of the woman that seems to be overlooked mm. by the current power structures mm-hmm. that they that are today. Mm. So I do believe even from a family point of view. Right. It's important like I think um in one of the con- conversations that we had that was a bit informal mm-hmm. um there was we were given the opportunity to define what we understand about feminism. Exactly. And I don't think I got my chance to give a response mm-hmm. but I would feel like like a man would understand so greatly the value of a woman if, if if they would even just pay attention to how they perceive their own mothers absolutely mm. right and that's something that starts from like home hey, you everyone know, is you a have bit. such a deep affection for the value no for your mother mm-hmm. and it's sort of it's 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 as a result of the identity that your mother has in your own life right so why don't you then relate that same thing to your other you know outside of your family context mm. express mm. extend that grace unto others and then you'll understand the feminism is actually pretty important mm. 
Mm, yeah. Absolutely. Um, we we had we had the conference themed around spaces, solidarity, and solutions um, in order to create some sort of enabling and core. Um, a, a safer space, basically, for solidarity and um, for solutions. sustainable solutions on gender equality. That was the spiel about it. What is for you? What what for you, Rashid? What what do those three terms mean for you as someone working in the development space, as someone uh, trying to ensure that? Um, gender equality is achieved in every single expression, in every single assignment, in every single project, uh, out, just outside of your own living, how mm. does that infuse into the kind of values that you bring into work? Uh, en- enabling or rather inclusive spaces, in, in, um, yeah, inclusive and co-created spaces, fostering solidarity, sustainable solutions. How does that, w- what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, the word you've just used is exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. The whole aspect of inclusivity. Um, for quite a while, the advocacy space was rich with young people coming in and saying, you know, we want to have more meaningful engagement, meaningful youth engagement. Mm-hmm. And meaningful youth engagement also meant that we needed to create these spaces, which I'd also use a word that Rafiki mentioned earlier, um, platforms. Platforms where young people can speak freely openly and actually are being heard. You're not just being listened to or being seen, but you're also being heard. And so it's always been a challenge or it's the whole idea has been around how do we continue continually continually continue to ensure <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it came with what mm. but how do we just continue to ensure that these platforms exist mm. whether online or offline mm-hmm. and so different solutions have uh, you know been presented over time and time again and maybe I can just um, reflect on something that we also do as development dynamics right. for one of our clients which is um, the Billy Now Now movement mm-hmm. we're creating this platform where we are inviting um, young people in their own individual self mm. but also young people within in the movements and the organizations that they exist mm-hmm. to come together and 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 you know the rallying call is a billion plus young people in mm-hmm. charge of their bodies their cultures and their destiny mm-hmm. and how this links to the next thing allo- around solidarity mm-hmm. is that for us we recognize that um Billy now now as the movement is not existing alone so we've always been coming or uh, thinking around who are the different partners mm. that we can bring on board to ensure that this billion plus young people are being reached right. and so solidarity is also the other one that use collaboration Mm. it's um you know connections Mm. it's saying that we have a solution or we have an idea of what needs to happen Mm -hmm. but then rafiki here already has the platform that Mm. is working within this um say specific cohort or you know individuals of young people that he's reaching out Mm. and maxi also has his own Mm. so how might we come together and you know work together so that at the end of the day we're really reaching this billion plus young people Mm. that's the whole solidarity bit of it is that um you know we see guys um chanting sometimes solidarity forever Mm. but solidarity would be if i'm able to come as me as rashid who has been in the you know space for you know youth development and youth empowerment Mm. um and then rafiki who who's probably into arts and culture and, you know, rap and whatnot. And then Maxi, who's a farmer from Moranga. How do we ensure oh, that wow. we are, you know, seeking blessings? Yeah, um, but but how also do, the rhyme. Yeah, <laughs> a farmer from Moranga. <laughs> but how do we ensure that at the end of the day, there's this platform that is existing for all of us to, you know, stay in solidarity mm. so that we're speaking one word. Yeah. We're able to, you know, command the masses mm. um, in order to actually push for policy change. Absolutely. And, and the thing that we're saying is once we have this space created, this platform, this safe space where young people really are able to live out their individual selves to the best possible way, then we are able to actually now start beginning to push for different changes in like policies. Mm. We're able to start pushing for changes in um, how we look at, you know, identity, as you mentioned, you know, what's the journey that a young person is taking when it comes to them even just being the best version of themselves. Mm. And then finally, that's where the solutions, solutions come, come in. 
Yeah. So solutions are created once we have all this, then we're able to now tailor make solutions for these different individuals of young people. Yeah. Me, I might want to be reached with the movie. He might be more inclined to listening to music. He might be more inclined to having a conversation in the community. Mm. So solutions now are mm. presented mm. once we're able to understand, you know, what are these different cohorts of young people that we're reaching out to? Mm. Um, you know, what's the power dynamics within right. that? And then now we can create solutions that are tailor made to those, yeah. um, you know, issues we're looking at. And and as development dynamics, we are that's that's our MO really. Mm-hmm. We are trying to um, listen to where some of the questions are, um, trying to co-create with young people, with old people, with communities, with governments, with organizations, what some of the potential I, we ideate with with these people I've mentioned uh, around some of the potential solutions, but also work with partners along that journey to to create th- these particular solutions, to prototype them, to test them, to monitor, evaluate, and seek you know like different cycles. And it's our joy; it's been our pleasure to be in business um, over the last couple of years. Rafiki, when we were attending this, there was a there was learning, there was networking, there was uh there was you know listening and creating conversations what what for you and you can reflect this as an individual who is also pretty new in the field um first of all what what are what were just your general observations and your general experience like for this your maiden debut trip <laughs> and and also like what 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 one thing um or two really stood out for you in terms of some of the themes that you felt were coming out really, really, really strong in the multiple engagements that you had while there? Right. So um, an experience that I would give, or rather a reflection I would give about just this experience and interacting with um, the social impact space Right. was, uh, number one, the initiatives are mm-hmm. many, mm. um, but then they're also very specific. Right. So you have SRHR mm-hmm. being um, a blanket term, but then it being addressed in so many specific ways, mm-hmm. which I found to be very interesting because ideally you can like you can talk about a problem in a general way, mm. but you sort of deal with a problem and you start to get to specifics. Mm. And I think that was something that I, I enjoyed to observe and to listen to mm. and to hear about um, efforts that have taken place in the past in relation to uh, implementing initiatives for these specific issues. And I guess there were very many. There was a comprehensive sexuality yeah. education, um, access to family planning and contraceptives yeah. for um, the people who need them, including girls and, and, and young women. Yeah. There was the rights of um, people who identify as sexual and gender minorities and how they access their SRHR. There was um, gender-based violence, uh, there was also people who um, are in sex work business and how SRHR, um, mm. you know, works around them. So the issue is, as you're saying, SRHR is one broad term, yeah, term. but the issues and those are not um, conclusive, all the ones I've listed, right. but the, there, was, there are so many issues and right. there are so many approaches right. and there are so many initiatives mm. for each. Correct. Mm-hmm. Now, so yeah, so that was also very interesting. I was gonna add one more, but mm. then, I, as you said, it's not a conclusive list. So which, I guess I, which other one? The one that we had this uh, conversation um, about this disease that is mistaken to be a sexually transmitted disease that mm. causes a, a stigma mm. or a fear in the girls that have it. Yes, yeah, st- uh, st- it is a difficult name. St- yeah. st- 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 something. Just you know what I mean. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. yeah, so that one. Right. It was a it was very interesting to also have that in consideration. Exactly. Mm. And also to learn about how these things really do impact um the 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 indiv- you know that the target audience if mm-hmm. you may call it that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I, th- I thought that was very interesting mm-hmm. and to hear about efforts that are taken. Mm-hmm. But now to answer the second question, which I do know what it was, so I, I can't describe it, but I can answer it. Mm-hmm. Was there's the initiative, and then there's the desire to implement the initiative mm-hmm. with the utility being fully defined by the target audience, right. which now we call decolonization, mm-hmm. right? Decolonization of these initiatives mm-hmm. and this power shifting mm-hmm. um, power structures that exist within this space mm-hmm. where a person, uh, person A, has the desire to fund an initiative 
but then defines how this initiative is going to be implemented mm. and the and the target audience finds themselves um not necessarily involved in the conversation mm. and so not necessarily they do not receive the utility that mm. may have been intended mm-hmm. by the individual that was spearheading the initiative yeah so that's something that i found that was interesting and that was um a conversation that cut across and it was every it, single yeah exactly mm. it was something that uh, you would have a conversation with someone and everyone is trying to sort of look into ways to you know go further within the conversation of how do we decolonize these movements mm. Mm. yeah that's something that i thought was interesting and and um before i come to just um thinking about movements mm. and i think rashid you spoke at a, at a virtual session on 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 movement building i just want to um throw a bit of weight into the whole conversation around um initiatives that are centered on and solved by uh the communities or the people affected the most i think that's where our human centered design yeah. approach to issues <coughs> comes we often are saying that as development dynamics we are working across four competency areas and one of those is human centered design which is largely as the name suggests putting the user at the center of any one of the uh challenges or problems that but also ensuring that we understand their user journey we understand their needs their pain points and then understand what for them would actually the solution would look like so when you are talking about transferring some of this power to even shape solutions uh, a way to actually do that that we've been testing over a number of years as not and not just ourselves is also alongside many other people in the field who are doing this is human centered design yeah. and i i love the fact that there were a lot i mean if i check the program again i could see a lot of um a lot of sessions that had human centricity at the center of them all but then um there is a conversation we'll come to and dig a little deeper and you've mentioned it is a conversation around localization uh before we come to that though rashid you had um a fairly nice session online where they was talking about social movements uh, and the role of um creative comms around that do you want to just speak on that highlight what it was and what your own take out and uh talking points were looking like then yeah um so our session was really looking at um uh SRHR advocacy and how storytelling uh, can actually lead to action for change mm-hmm. um what stood out for me within that session it was uh, powered by PPG and Oxfam mm-hmm. uh but what really made it one of the like a really engaging session is the panelists that were with it, the panelists that we were mm-hmm. um because we got to hear you know um from the context of different uh, regions mm-hmm. within the globe mm-hmm. and so there was myself mm-hmm. um from east africa representing uh, representing east africa mm-hmm. uh we had a lady from malawi so mm-hmm. that would be almost east and south and africa mm-hmm. then we had a lady from uh the philippines mm-hmm. so that's giving us more asian vibes yeah. and then asian vibes <laughs> <laughs> and then we had another lady from uh latin america so mm-hmm. also getting the perspective from that side mm-hmm. uh of of the globe mm-hmm. And so really for this we were just trying to see you know from your own lens from your own perspective you know what has been the conversation that you've been having and how has um, you know using you know stories and real life situations and real life experiences helped in your advocacy journey mm. um but what uh, you could hear or what you could tell and i think that was even my final closing remarks mm. is the whole aspect of how at the end of the day we're still connected with regards to the issues that we're really trying to yep. have um conversations and mm. find solutions for mm. there's a there's connectedness mm. even in the globe mm-hmm. i mean in kenya we talk about um you know teenage pregnancies mm. um the high rates of uh, hiv infection amongst young people mm. you know just localizing it to like sexual reproductive health and rights for young people mm. so there's a teenage pregnancy um hiv infections sti infections mm. um and then there's the whole aspect of like um uh you know unsafe abortions mm. and 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 the numbers that are coming from that you know how many girls were losing because of unsafe abortions etc then you hear the perspective from the philippines and it's almost the same mm. i mean you know you talk about what are some of the barriers barriers um you'd look at you know this circle of influence around 
um, young people. Uh, you'd think that it's an African thing when we say it's the community, the community, mm. you know, the community can be very close guarded mm. Mm. and the community doesn't want to really be, you know, think outside the box. Mm. But then you hear in the Philippines, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. You hear in Latin America, it's literally almost the same thing. Mm. So that whole aspect of connectedness just, mm. um, you know, sort of gives hope that at the end of the day, um, solutions that we could come up with here in Kenya, tried and tested in Kenya, mm. can actually also work in other countries just with a bit more contextualization for exactly. that. Yeah. And so again, really we're coming back to the whole aspect of solidarity. Mm. Um, so that was for me the highlight of, of of that session, just being able to see that you know there's some connectedness with mm. regards to all the issues that we're trying to talk about. Mm. And even with regards to um, you know the solutions that are being presented mm. with the different countries. So, yeah, so yeah. I like that. And um, you talk about communication and storytelling. Um, you, Rafiki, got an opportunity to... Um, also engage in, a, you know, to communicate and story tell um, in two sessions at the at the Billy Now Now side event, and also when the Billies took over the um, podcast, the Rising podcast Mind. for Rising Minds uh, that was powered by Foundation, Foundation Botner. Foundation Botner. All right, you pronounce it like From someone who home. went to that's like a proper school. <laughs> Not as <laughs> <with> polling <laughs> station. No, that's what she said. Oh yes. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> your reflections on those two, and what what were you bringing out as a key message, and well, what was also coming out from your other, you know, like f- those those that you were with in those two engagements. Um, just basically what Rashid has talked about, mm-hmm. which is connectedness okay. in such a strong way, and he's even said that he's given the perspective of of different regions that mm. you've just mentioned right now, mm. and that was the same case. Um, let's say for the podcast or mm. the Rising Minds, the the conversation was about um, healthy and safe relationships amongst mm. young people, mm. and um, we saw that as a very strong conduit towards any form of movement or any form of um, just any form of unit that is run by young people for mm. young people, mm. you know, and that connectedness is something that was interesting yeah. to observe during the, the during the podcast because mm. you mm. have ideas from people in India, mm-hmm. um, Sorali from Senegal, India. yeah, mm. Sorali from India. Mm-hmm. There was a guy from Senegal, this mm. Uganda. There was um, I mean, Benin, Benin well. wasn't present, but Bukina. it was uh, Bukina, 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 Bukina yeah. where mm. this PNN thing actually yeah, started, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. and the connectedness was felt in the sense that what was being spoken about was being echoed in everybody's voice just locally contextualized Mm -hmm. Mm. so that's that is exactly what you're saying and that's the same thing with the first session the side session with um girls the girls the girls conference oh oh, oh, you mean that no the first uh session that we had the the first side one for ppg for for billy now now now, side event right Correct. Yeah. Mm. Thank you mm-hmm. for that correction. Uh, so yeah. So um, that it, it was interesting to have the opportunity to speak about what Belize are looking to mm. do and mm. how they are looking to collaborate yeah. and the passion that's within them. Mm. It's one voice that is speaking for so many others, mm. which is bringing out this global connection. Mm. But then in terms of collaboration, yeah. let's contextualize it. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, and then. Again, uh, sharing on experiences was on the first day that mm. we went on Sunday. Mm. And the first session we literally went for, they were sharing experiences of mm. young girls, the, mm. the things that young girls face. Mm. And it's almost like everyone was almost saying the same thing again within their con- contextualized spaces. Mm. Mm. Yeah, S- um, We are really a largely connected world. And I think there were 6,000 000- people class advocates attending in person and many other thousands attending virtually. I think a lot of the world is coming together to ensure that the connected issues around gender equality, we have proper solutions for. Mm. We have the right spaces for them. We have the um, right way to, 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 to handle that. Um, now, wearing the heart of development dynamics and your role as a design strategist, your role as an analyst, my role as my role <laughs> <laughs> your role as who? Um, as the host <laughs> well yeah as a person creating the safe space and the enabling environment for this to work what do you think are some of the reflections that we can actually take forward in terms of even how 
we with with our cl- uh, current set of clients and partners and collaborators but also with um how to pick out um different sets of individuals or organizations or pa- places of interest for us to uh, for us to go what what key takeouts from the women deliver should we should you should i carry forward and should 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 we with our team and others who really are also in this development field be looking closely at in terms of how we are identifying shaping um and and supporting uh clients and projects and assignments yeah i think the full one can start before they have one all right <laughs> you could start um rafiki how how what do you think how where does this conference leave you as as someone who is starting off in this field what how how, how do you f- do you feel better equipped and if yeah. so by what sorry i was still connecting the full one needs to start connect i was like wait what the full one like the full one full like oh no because full like full or full like really full because you had like because guys we are focusing on a really interesting it was a dad joke you guys went me was there virtually so this shall not be edited because there is no money to edit so please lord jesus so yeah what i would take away is number one um in considering human centered design thinking mm-hmm. there is data and insights collected yeah but in order to um design something that truly um aligns with the needs of the target audience there is need to validate the mm-hmm. data that you collect Absolutely. Yeah. from the various uh points of input in relation to the data you're collecting mm. so i would say that definitely fine tunes the delivery of whatever service or whatever impact you wish to have mm-hmm. towards the target audience so i would uh, yeah as in from a person who is doing analysis mm. i see the importance of ensuring that the analysis communicates in order to better direct efforts and to ensure that they're they're, they're presented in the right way and mm. at the right place and at mm. the right time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And building on that, I guess one of the touch points that we have with different clients with different uh projects is the place where when a challenge is presented or when you're responding as DD and we are like we we want to take on this journey with you. We want to partner with you to to achieve this. Often we are coming from that point of we want to analyze mm. what is already existent but also at times what is existent but is not known yeah you know what is what is somewhere in the air maybe what is somewhere in the air with the people who are um affected the most at times it could be just for a strategy that um maybe for a localization strategy that a partner is looking to design and implement what is known already by those ones who are trying or those ones who are being pained those could be um the people that localization i mean the people that are affected by delocalization in 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 an organization that could be um partners that could be donors that could be anyone in that in that value chain who needs to bring their perspective so we love to listen we say that we we listen deeply and mm. by listen deeply is that we are listening um in order to capture but in order to also ensure that whatever is being brought out through king depth interviews through focus group discussions through even analytical um surveys that we that we carry out that the insights that are that is being brought from that is actionable insights that enable the kind of solutions that are gender gender transformative the kind of solutions that are sustainable in the lo- in the long run to actually be designed so that's that i completely agree with you on that and you know plus one and rubber stamp uh, yeah. on it and yeah. uh, from that place of design we then get to often a place of uh, i mean from that place of inquiry and listening deeply and analyzing and presenting findings we often are then able to design yes. strategies and you can speak For maybe sure. around that and it's also just um as you were speaking one of the things i just, just popped in my mind is uh from the very moment we you know started to experiment and and work around human centered design i remember something that came up was that we listen so that we are responsible responders yeah why do i say that mm-hmm. is often times what used to happen is you know you come in with the notion that we already know what the you problem know. is you mm-hmm. know this problem exists and we have the solution already mm-hmm. now let us go mm-hmm. create the policy mm-hmm. and move on mm-hmm. 
we're not responding responsibly mm. but now we come back and we listen and see how best do we ensure that um as we're responding to this challenge mm. we're really en- um being responsible around how we're working around it mm. and so also making sure that the end user at the end of the day also feels that it's um they can connect to it uh but yeah i think for me one of the other things that also came out just beyond the whole aspect of you know moving from uh designing without the end user in mind but always ensuring that you know even if it means sometimes you collect the insights and the data and then you realize all oh, the solution we had thought about doesn't work so you have to yeah. come back during the prototyping yeah. phase yeah. and so it's it's an expensive journey yeah. but it's a journey that is important because mm. um the solutions that usually come out of that are what we were also talking about sustainable solutions mm. Mm. you're able to um reflect um from you know from the persona's own point of view yeah. and see uh you know at the end of the day this is what uh would make more sense for mm. this person so mm. how do we ensure mm. uh that as we're looking for this future we're already responding to some of the issues right now so exactly. that we can realize that future for them and, and i say that just to really say that <laughs> uh i say that because what we need to also do is sometimes design with the end goal in mind mm-hmm. design with our vision in mind mm. uh and 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 one of the uh you know tools that i we i try to employ as much as possible is that movement building canvas mm-hmm. and the design canvas where before you even go to the problem it's mm. you know what's the vision that you have what's the end desire that you're trying to see okay now from that let's start to be let's begin to work backwards Backward. so it's also around you know all these are connected sort of um solutions that you can you know engage it's like using scenarios building um it's uh you know using the future horizons um shape or framework mm-hmm. so it's really just that designing with the end in mind so mm. that um what you're doing now mm. is not responding to issues of now but mm. is also being reflective of what the future problems could be mm. Mm. and you're ready ready to respond to them yeah i um thank you because you mentioned about designing for the future uh one of the thing we 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 are loving to say now uh and it's because we've gotten to a place where we feel comfortable to go beyond the buzzwords mm. we feel comfortable that anything we are saying right now within dd um and it remains to be co- continuously tested and proven but we are really happy to say that we are innovating for better futures um we are dis- we are we are uh, we are researching analyzing for designing you know the whole in in a very creative innovative process for better futures and better futures at times are futures that in even in the context of this women deliver the idea around gender equality and everyone we try to ask do you think in our lifetime gender equality will be achieved mm. everyone's answer is no but there are particular targets that we can get to yeah so uh, as development dynamics as individuals as fathers as brothers as 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 um you know humans we know that we want to leave this world as a greater gender equal world more than we found it we may not have achieved 100% gender equity targets because again um uh, you know it was realized during this conference it was been reported that we are really far from even our 2030 targets around that but how can we be contributing to that as human beings but also because we 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 have this very unique opportunity to work in a world that is causing impact that is causing social impact and that is contributing towards development more uniquely than maybe some other fields we feel like there is a contribution that we have to make and we feel that our commitment now is to go outside of um outside of the ba- the buzzwords you know outside of is to take spaces to take solidarity and to take solution solutions outside of just those three terms but in everything they, that they actually mean and hence why i was saying we'll come back to the conversation around localization mm. um i'm very happy when i look at development dynamics and see that we are a pan african boutique consulting firm pan african we are very when i when i say pan african we mean really like rooted within african uh needs understand seeking to understand african needs in the most unique way but also providing african centered or um african best african solutions for african problems mm. uh, especially within the development sector uh there there are three other words that we use 
often and i'd like just your um each of you to re- reflect on reframe resolve uh, rather resolve. yeah reframe reimagine and resolve beyond just the buzzwords what does that look like for you also given just the context that we've been discussing what does that look like for for you maybe rafik you could go first right. reframe puts me in a place where i think about the space and i think of the space as providing a solid foundation for which solidarity and solution can flow right so space in reco- in terms of this conversation also puts me in a place where i think about clarity mm-hmm. clarity on what one's role is clarity on what one's vision is right at mm-hmm. least all the stakeholders involved because mm. it's their clarity that enhances the strength of the space or the strength of the system that mm. the space is mm. right and so again if we all have one mind in relation to our vision then that allows for solidarity to find its pride of place mm. and once solidarity finds its pride of place that allows for implementation of whatever mm. solution that we are trying to achieve mm. so that's something that would come within my mind Thanks. in relation to reframing mm-hmm. it's there's a certain way that it has been framed mm-hmm. and that has not worked in line with whatever was the target um the the, the target outcome mm-hmm. and so then to achieve this target outcome let us reframe the way we formulate this space yeah right yeah. and that's the decolonization mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yeah yeah i love that uh i think from my perspective i would say um reframe is looking at it from a different lens mm-hmm. uh because a lot of the times for you know um for the clients that we are working with for the different um spaces and solutions we are trying to design for uh you could end up looking at it from just one lens and so reframing it is also like looking at it from a different lens from a different angle mm. so we're able to really just uh you know chambua chambua like yeah. completely um break it down to mm. a very minute um uh questions mm-hmm. so if the problem for instance could be you know just off the top of my mind like if you're talking about teenage pregnancies mm. it's like what are some of the immediate causes you know what are some of the long term or right. factors that are playing in between mm. so like looking at that so reframing mm. um from just one lens of looking at something mm. and then now looking at it from as many different angles as mm. possible mm. then reimagine um if i could also use the example of uh like marvel um comics you mm-hmm. know when you see the multiverse mm. so we reimagine like what if what could be yeah uh, what if or mm. what could be mm. so reimagine like so many different things and this is you know even the exercises we do for around um scenario building mm. you know look at it from like the worst lens ever like mm. how bad could it go mm. or how good could it get mm. so really reimagine what those solutions could look like mm. so that when you're resolving you're not resolving for just one issue in mind yeah. but you're resolving um but while thinking about what are these different things that could happen so mm. that at any day you're ready to respond yeah. um to any catalytic change that mm. um, you know may present itself yeah. so that you're never caught off guard yeah. and so that when we're giving back um you know to the different clients when we're giving back like this is a final um you know report from this so this is our final uh, documentation of this we're able to show the client that we've thought about mm. what are the different perspectives yeah. that really could um you know inflict within the work that you're doing mm. and this is how you could actually uh, mm. you know think about it yeah. uh, so that you're never caught with your pants down yeah pause <laughs> i love I that could be good <laughs> i love yeah. that um yeah the effort to go beyond the buzzwords and to make sure that it is meaningful uh is 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 something that i also saw in the work in the in the conference and also in some of a lot of what people are sharing as their own reflections post this um now be, as we begin just to wind this up and we are hoping to be doing this kind of thing for different um assignments that we are doing for different expressions that we have so we'll be back here uh, some other time maybe also uh, other team members um you know to share different uh, perspectives of their of their work and their engagement but um two questions for each of you before we um we call it a wrap call it moi <laughs> <laughs> um for you moi what's moi 
ara moi ah dude oh my god <laughs> ah, dude <laughs> uh, for you your um uh, again i'm 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 outing you by saying pause uh by saying you have had a a, a fairly interesting start to your i mean you're barely what two weeks old in in the organization and um baby. yeah and barely uh but you've had quite like a like immersion a, a immersion of, of 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 things and of work and of the space i i think just being there you probably were able to see the space in all its diversity <laughs> literally and um and and i i don't know how you reflect especially as a scientist as a mathematician of the kind of the kind the importance of international consulting uh or strategy consulting and the importance of the kind of work that we do just based on your imagine over the last two weeks from a very personal level what what mm-hmm. is that and then okay and then as you answer that the, the next question is we are just dotting but the next question is what 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 would you tell your younger self who's prob- who probably don't even know about this kind of thing the kinds of world that we live in just based on the kind of experiences that we've had and then we'll go to Rashid wait okay no there are no two questions you 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 your own reflections based on um from your background from your background as 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 um you know as someone who's not like from an international development right uh, background you are not studying this kind of thing before you're an accountant um so and and your whole experience getting immersed into this and if there's something that you would tell your younger self what is it that you would right so i would say um first of all yeah you describe my background as a mathematician and a scientist uh, like an accountant yes we haven't had too many conversations have we <laughs> 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 no but um i first of all i do consider it uh you know sort of like a very nice like i wouldn't say nice experience i'd say interesting experience to be immersed in such a way within such a space and then also to have to a degree some form of contribution in the conversations that are being held which made me feel like this is probably somewhere that uh, you know it's almost like a calling to be you know just allowing things to flow naturally even though they are unfamiliar spaces but i like um i like the the place of like consultancy in relation to the social impact space because it brings what may be termed as utopian ideas Mm. into actual manifestation and sort of being a conduit that allows this to take place. So number one is there are pure intentions by the individuals that would like these initiatives to take place and there are actual people who have their lives changed as a result of proper implementation of these things and to work in a space where we through development dynamics work as that conduit is almost like a perfect placing for anyone that desires to work on something that has impacts that you can observe wonderful oh yeah for myself you should have gotten into this earlier but thank god that our <laughs> journeys are all <laughs> you know thank god for the journeys that he takes us through because mm-hmm. they're all meaningful and um they're all they all serve a purpose they all serve a purpose mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. very nice That's nicely said very nice and 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 thank you so much and welcome like from the boat from awesome the, 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 the team welcome to i think what you've seen is just the tip of the iceberg uh there is a lot more to <laughs> rashid don't smile like that <laughs> okay um, so then pause it was an iceberg <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. you're um you're around 10 years in the field dude you're old Ooh. but young i mean you've Don't been around um you've been around what is social impact work for a number of years one awards done the most been brave gone through the most found yourself in the journey developed as a young person into like a uh, like a young adult a younger now <laughs> into into something we are still all trying to figure out <laughs> <laughs> uh but also have had various opportunities both at the front line mm-hmm. um and also at uh behind the scenes where you're creating you're creating strategy but at times also have spoken at the UN high level commissions and like you you have really done the most that like the full the entire spin what 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 keeps you in it 
what keeps you in it i know cuz on the other side of the rashid that i know is that there's a mechanic there's a guy who loves cars there's mm. a guy who loves um you know other tools and uh the tools that you end up working with and using are tools that um you know around like using your analysis using your creativity but within like strategy design and stuff what what is it that keeps you in it and what keeps you returning even when you feel like uh, yeah. by the way i'm done because the field can also get very tiring yes. it can wear you out um what what has kept you in it for 10 years and it is 10 years kwanza the field not can wear you out it does yeah. it, it does it's draining it's um because you know beyond just uh using your own like um intellectual property to you know come up with initiatives and solutions you're also using your own self as the uh, I'll use the word rafiki keeps on coming back with conduit mm. <laughs> of these solutions really coming um into being uh but i think for me my motivation comes from two things uh one the motivation to uh you know just ensure that um when i got into this field i think i was still i was still in high school mm. Um yeah and we actually met when I was wearing uniform here my god <laughs> sorry for another day mm. uh, I, 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 no that that post the podcast post the podcast mm. yeah <laughs> uh but I was still in high school and 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 that for me that time it was just around I'm finding some you know creative artistic solutions uh to have conversations with my fellow like um peers um because the school I went to you know me live a polling station that school was not even big enough to be a polling station it was just it was a kamabati shake mahali hapo tu so you get to interact with so many different people so um at that point it was you know what can what might be um that solution for my peers within this space but as you know i continued to grow and i continued to you know be immersed into the field more i saw that it was more than just this um few young people i was interacting with it was actually a global problem it was actually something that th- there there was there was a need there was a need and i had the niche mm. and so for me my motivation came from just trying to see at the end of the day how do we ensure that um you know initiatives that are working for me here in um sub-saharan africa can actually be the same things that we're doing in um you know latin america or even in the in north america you know so like how do we just bring in that whole and i'll come back to our word solidarity mm. so for me my my first motivation is i want to be here so that i can see that realized mm. if we are you know for one of the clients which is bnn and saying a billion plus young people in charge of their bodies cultures and destinies i want to see those billion plus young people mm. um if it's with regards to um uh you know another initiative we were both a part of which was gactivate and gactivate was around ensuring that young people are more active citizens that when it comes to leadership and governance they know their role mm. they know their rights and they know their freedoms and they can actively participate mm. in leadership and governance spaces mm. so how do we ensure that that is happening mm. you know so my motivation is just to really realize this dream where um this is the majority who is being treated like the minori- minority mm. we young people are the majority but we end up being marginalized a lot mm. so how do we just keep on breaking those barriers you know how do we keep on finding more innovative solutions mm. um you know to ensure that more young people are coming into this space and motivation is how do we ensure that you know i'm able to find rafiki who his background is in finance and now bringing him into this whole development space and be like oh there's also this that is happening mm. so that he now becomes woke mm. um if we keep on going to the same places and same spaces and seeing the same faces I rhymed again mm-hmm. ding, <laughs> ding mm. then we're not really doing anything we yeah. are holding mm. this um solutions mm. to just a few woke young people within yeah. this space yeah. we're not going to like my cousins who are in um shags but people say I shouldn't call it shags because iko to hapa karibu na Nairobi mm. but my cousins who are in shags who are farmers why are they not a part of this conversation mm. Mm. then my other motivation is just the whole aspect of as i'm trying to realize this future i also see there's a generation coming up behind mm. me i have a son who's 6 years old very mm. soon 
you at some point when we met uh your son was also there six or seven and now he's a pre-teenager you see mm. and the solutions you were talking about then are the ones that are going to be affecting his life now, now. Yeah. so thinking about that generation that is behind me how do i ensure that i'm clearing a path mm. that um you know when they get there they can have it easier than us because mm. for us it wasn't easy yeah. so how can we make it easier for them so that we're not having the same conversations over and over again but there's some progress that's being made yeah. so that's what keeps me coming back just mm. to ensure that I am creating a better path and a better lifestyle for the generation that's behind me. And um and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that you have continued being um because it's a being you've can you've continued becoming the change that you want to see. Mm. Which is which is which is wonderful and um collectively I think as development dynamics we've had some really good impact and i look at the um almost near 30 or so clients that we've worked with in almost um a slightly above 50 assignments in 16 countries the kind of resources that you've been able to raise across different social impact areas and what each of you and each of the rest of the team members has been able to contribute to that and i'm sincerely thankful i'm sincerely thankful to uh being challenged every day around even the kind of infrastructure that we ourselves have and what that looks like and what we should be shifting yeah. you know right now we are in a conversation where we are saying we are owners of uh development dynamics we are not um staff uh or we are just the owners of this we are the owners we are the people m- making and shaping this and that's a huge declaration when we talk about flat structuring we are like what does that actually look like and why that is important in ensuring that we are the right contribus- contributors to a localization conversation to a decolonization of global health conversation uh it's it starts with our own structure and yeah. we we want to continue being vulnerable in our conversations and therefore we'll have a lot more of uh, these kinds of conversations just and reflections with the team to share our um, everyday learnings our everyday failures i think we fail more than we've succeeded but we are grateful because those failures have been the ones that have enabled even the successes that we can say we've been a part of we fail forward we fail forward exactly and we feed into the future so given um that's it from me i n- never ever i do not know how to end my podcast even the um the 200 and so episodes that we've done i always leave it to the uh to the guests i don't feel like either of us is really a guest here <laughs> but i feel like i should hand over um you, to you to have a closing remarks and then you can close for us what with, like with a word of prayer or <laughs> oh, whatever man if that's what you want it's welcome i uh, got every day anyway yeah yeah no that's true yeah. um so in closing um is to say that uh Uh you know first of all exactly reiterating what you said for DD it's all about how do we continue to fail forward but also for me personally it's just to ensure that um uh I can create a space within development dynamics that allows more young people outside of the development field to come in and also interact with the solutions that we're trying to create for our different clients um I want to ensure that uh DD continues to be um responsive to the needs and wants of our clients not from our own perspective but from the end user's perspective so how do we continue to design with the end user in mind and how do we continue to just ensure that um you know we're not missing the bar mm. when we talk about you know that whole aspect of reimagining mm. and resolving and finding those solutions mm. and finally peace <laughs> peace Yo, over to you. Yo. Uh, with the easiest task of them all. Was it the prayer? Yeah, like uh, to close this man. Uh, uh, anything recorded that here is recorded. So hey. Yeah, I know you went so deep. I wasn't I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> hey, yes, for days. Pause for days. <laughs> Pause for days. Stop there. Uh no, but I think um in conclusion, I would say then for me, um having had this conversation, having um at least established the fact that I'm I wouldn't say I'm a novice, but I'm definitely enjoying a lot of what I am currently mm-hmm. experiencing. Um at least coming from where I came from. This transition, yeah. this transition process has been very beautiful to sort of uh be part and parcel 
of development dynamics within their goal to reframe, reimagine and resolve. And I think that in itself is a prayer answered because that is in itself transformation, right? Towards ourselves, towards those that we that we partner with and towards those that we are supporting through these initiatives. Right? Yeah, snap 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 them fingers. So yeah, I think um with that, I do believe you did enjoy the conversation and not only enjoy the conversation, but you had some pretty good starter packs to what you can do in your own context um to whoever it is that you want to support. Thank you. Come on. Come on now.